Good morning again everybody. So today is the same day as the previous video that I uploaded and the main reason why I decided to make another video today is because I wanted, I was doing something here in the garden and I thought oh this could be a very valuable information for people growing veggies out there. So I thought that today is very hot day, so I decided to add some cold water onto the compost so the worms are nice and fresh. So I came here on the worm farm and the worm farm has a tap that allows that water that drains from the worm farm onto a bucket. So. There is a lot of good nutrients on that water. Lots of nutrients, lots of minerals, everything that drains from that warm farm. So today's topic, it's going to be about warm leachate. And also I'll be talking a little bit about dynamic lifter, um, compost, uh, seaweed, liquid, and blood and bone. So those are the main uh, nutrients that I add into the garden or the main fertilizers and compost that I use in the garden. So I'll be talking a little bit about that, but mostly about the warm leachate, which I think is a very good source of nutrients and it's pretty much free. You can buy your own warm farm um, at a probably around forty fifty dollars in Bunnings. Bunnings is my favorite shop to to buy things for the garden. Um, it's a very reliable constructed warm farm. If you want to make one, you can make one out of hot a hot tub or something that is solid and it has the shape where you can like throw all the kitchen scraps in there and have your worms but that's after you there is a lot of projects out there that you can do to create a nice warm farm so i am gonna be uh, using this leachate onto my veggies so sometimes i have some veggies that may be struggling or, or some plants may be struggling just because they have some yellow leaves or they look a little bit sad. So I will be adding a little bit of this because that will help to repair the soil where the plant is growing. So in this case, these plants are not struggling, but I want them, I want these beetroots to grow as much as they can in the next week or the next two weeks so i can harvest them and eat it so i want them to grow as much as i can as they can and I, I just simply add some leachate in there you can add it on top of the leaves or on the side as long as the soil is benef benefiting from it and you know if you put it on the leaves it's usually good because this contains a lot of microbial activity that helps with helps the leaves to for it to avoid any uh, pests or any insects that will try to eat it. I don't know the exact information about that, but that's what I have read on the internet, and I find it interesting because this is an entire ecosystem that helps each other. So I think those worm castings may have a lot of good things. Um, one thing that I can tell you now is an enzyme that the poo of the worm contains. And that enzyme apparently helps the plant or the leaves to be protected. Even the roots benefit from that enzyme that these worms produce. So that's why they say the, the, the worm castings are probably one of the best things that you can be adding to your garden so uh, so yeah just if you need a plant to finish growing strong if it's not the size that you are looking for for example you may add a little bit of that warm leachate onto the soil and hope that this plant grows a little bit stronger and have more nutrients so the next thing that i want to talk about 
It's the other type of fertilizers and products that I use in the garden. So the first and the one that I use the most is Dynamic Lifter. That Dynamic Lifter contains chicken manure, seaweed, blood and bone, and fish meal. Probably one of the best things that you can be adding in your garden. And it's also organic, so it's for me it's perfect. It contains the blood and bone, the fish meal. It's all like good things that I have read about and I have watched videos on YouTube and this is good stuff. Chicken manure is great. Seaweed is probably contains a lot of good minerals. And talking about seaweed, we got seaweed solution so this is like liquid seaweed very good for plants as well just to improve the the soil to give some nice um, nutrients and feed feed the soil it contains a lot of good stuff um, I don't know deeply what it contains but I know that it's good for your garden and yeah, they recommend this for the roots of the plants so they can grow strong. Yeah, so many things that this thing can do. So this one, very recommended too, once in a while. Just to feed the soil, depends on what you consider appropriate at, at the time. And then the next thing is the rock mineral. So fertilizer and soil improver. Contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Potassium, very important for when you want to grow some tomatoes. So if you want to grow tomatoes tall without fruit, you add nitrogen. If you want to have nice juicy tomatoes with a few leaves, then add more potassium than nitrogen. So um, I'm not very familiar with these ranges, but I know that some plants require more of one of those ingredients for the plant to grow. So instead of like, for example, if you are growing leafy greens, you may want to add some nitrogen so the leaves grow nice and strong. But if you are growing to, um, tomatoes, you will want to grow um, as many tomatoes as you can instead of leaves. So that's where potassium comes uh, to work. So, so for example, potatoes, they require a lot of potassium as well. So the, you need to find a balance in, in all of this. And when you go into the gardening store, you will find different ranges. I'm not very familiar with it, but that will be a topic for another day when I am more familiar with it. The next thing that I wanna talk about is blood and bone. Very good for your garden as well. I use it a lot as um, fertilizer. Uh, it repairs soil and it's it's made like it's like a powder. So it dissipates pretty easily in the soil, like it disappears pretty easily. So. It's a good, quick solution to fix your soil. If you want something that takes a little bit more time, maybe this one, it, this is like a slow release. So three months feed. So it takes three months to like release all of it. I think it takes a little bit less time than this, but you know, it's still good because it's a slow release. Dynamic lifter also takes a bit of time, probably four weeks, I would say, to dissipate, to disappear into the soil. And seaweed is pretty quick because it's, it's liquid, so the soil pretty much absorb everything pretty fast and everything dissolves pretty quick. So that's all what I use in the garden. Then I have my compost, which is made out of the kitchen scraps in the kitchen. 
and made out of leaves, made out of carton. So it's all the combination of all the organic materials that I can mix together and eventually it um, decompose and become a fine, fine soil. This soil will contain a lot of good nutrients and it's probably the best thing that you, that you can add to the garden and it's for free so you can make it in your house you can have a bean and simply start throwing all your kitchen scraps in these two beans that is probably uh, i don't know a year and a half worth of kitchen scraps so it's it's pretty good we haven't thrown any kitchen scraps onto the onto the beans like the beans that are collected so it's a nice way to help the environment and to save money so usually you may be able to harvest some compost after all of these get decomposed but you have to wait a few months probably a year that's my plan for this one this one has been here for like I think it's four or six months, but this thing works nice, except that sometimes it comes apart like in this side here, but you know, I fix it. And if you're gonna buy a compost bin, I would recommend the rounded ones, completely sealed. If you have patience enough and you don't need to harvest anything from like an extra window, you just leave it there for a year. You come back, everything is decomposed. Everything is ready to be used in the garden. Don't forget to water once in a while, maybe once every every week during the summer. If it's winter, maybe every four weeks, to be honest. It's winter uh, is pretty cold, nothing, water don't evaporate. So yeah, but just make sure that you water your compost but it's a fantastic way even if you don't have any plants growing you just you just throw it in there and then they become soil good soil to harvest uh, to, to apply in the garden so as you can see here we got some very fine soil It's a little bit compacted, but this has a lot of good nutrition on it. So I'm gonna throw it there. So if you have the right mixture of ingredients, so for example, they talk about um, brown, brown stuff, brown, um, how do you call it? I forgot, but yeah, brown and green. So the greens, you talk about uh, recent, recently cut grass, you find kitchen scraps, you find uh, peels of fruit, and then you talk about brown, you may, have, you may be talking about um, carton, you talk about dry leaves, you talk about um, this type of carton, egg cartons. So the ratio is around, well, there is different recommendations for this. Sometimes they say 50% dry stuff and 50% the, the green stuff. So 50% brown, 50% green. So sometimes they recommend 60% brown and 40% green. Sometimes it's 70, sometimes 70, 30. So it all depends on, you know, what you are adding. And after a while you get you, you get a sense of what your compost need and then you just start adding that. So yeah, that's all for today. That's all the, the, the products that I use here to fix the soil in the garden. If you have any questions, please just leave a comment down below and I will help you if I know the topic. If I don't, I will maybe search it on the internet and try to give some help. Um, that's all for today uh, give it a like to the video if you think it's useful information 
and don't forget to subscribe if you are new and you're just watching this video for the first time and have a good day anywhere where you are have a good day ciao